I'm going to go over basic programming. This is a good overview, but you should really read the programming part of the manual. You already read the manual, right? When I told you you should read it last time? Yeah? Good. Before you start, you'll probably want to pull all the fuses for the fuel pump, fan, anything controlled by the ECU. You'll also want to disconnect the ignition coils just to be safe. Once we get a basic tune-in, we can hook everything else back up. First off, download Tuner Studio and install it. Before you can do anything, you have to make a new project. Name it something meaningful so that three years from now, you don't have to wonder what the hell good tune WFO12.msq means. Make sure you download the USB drivers if you have a USB port on board. If not, you'll need to get a USB serial adapter. Get one that has the FTDI chipset. Those are almost always compatible. If it doesn't detect, make sure your serial adapter is being seen by your computer by looking at the device manager. You have to select the correct firmware, and the easiest way to do this is to hook up your Megasquirt and have it automatically detect it. Enter the project settings. Default settings are good here. Default dashboard is also a good place to start. Make sure you don't tune from a blank file. If you see an error message that says, attention, there is no tune loaded, you'll want to download a tune to start from. Pick a sample tune from the software that's somewhat similar to what you're doing. We'll be changing a lot of things, but a blank tune puts a bunch of zero values where we might not want zero values. You need to be careful about using someone else's tune. All engines are different, even similar types of engines, and all have inputs and output setups that you might not be using. It's a good place to start from, but it's only a start. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go to the basic engine constants. Go to basic load settings and click on engine and sequential settings. You should know most of this stuff, so fill it out. The control algorithm tells the ECU what sensor to use for the base map. Speed density uses the manifold pressure sensor. Alpha N uses the throttle position sensor. ITB is a control algorithm made specifically for independent throttle bodies. It uses the manifold pressure and the throttle position sensor, switching between them depending on the engine load. My 250 is programmed with alpha N using only the throttle position because it doesn't have an intake manifold at all, so the pressure fluctuates too much. My one liter is programmed with ITB and it's probably what you want to use. The number of injectors don't count the upper stage, so even though I have eight injectors, I put four here. You might not know your fuel injector flow rate. You can Google around and try to find out. Sometimes you can find performance injectors for your bike that will tell you what the stock injectors flow. My 1 liter 4 cylinder Honda has injectors that flow 270 cc's per minute. The 250 injector flows about 240 cc's per minute. You can test this out pretty easily, and you probably should if you're not sure of your injector's flow rate. You'll also need to know your injector dead time, and we can easily test both of these things at the same time. Your injectors take some time to open after the ECU sends the electricity to them. This is called the dead time because no fuel is coming out. You need to have a pretty accurate dead time in the settings, otherwise it's going to be hard to get a stable tune. Again, you might be able to find out this info by looking around, but you can also measure it. Take your injector rail out and point the injectors in some containers, like glass jars or something. You'll need to secure the injectors to the fuel rail. Use the test mode to open the injectors for one millisecond and see if fuel comes out. Increase your injector open time to 1.01, then 1.02, and up until you just start to see fuel spraying out. Whatever that opening time is, that's your dead time. You also need a voltage correction, so you should do this test at least twice in two different voltages. I used a battery charger to get a higher voltage. While you have your injectors out and spraying into a jar, you can use the test mode to run the injectors and measure the fuel output. I set up the injectors to open at 40 millisecond intervals for 40 milliseconds for 1500 pulses. This is the same as the injectors being wide open for 60 seconds. Spray that into a jar, then measure the fuel in the jar in milliliters. By the way, if you use this measuring cup, it will ruin it and your partner will make you buy her a new one. One milliliter is one cubic centimeter and your total open time was one minute, so that's how you get cubic centimeters per minute. Be sure to use a closed jar so you don't spray gasoline everywhere. A beer bottle works pretty well for this. The test mode works great to diagnose problems. Use it to make sure all your injectors and coils are wired up correctly and working. I would finish doing your basic setup before using test mode. Just guess on your injector flow rate dead time and then come back and measure it with the test mode. Also, a quick note about the software. If you can't find the setting you're looking for, just type it into the search box up here and it'll take you to it. There are lots of settings, so don't be surprised if you get a bunch of results that are not what you're looking for. Anyway, back to the engine and sequential settings. The rest of this stuff is pretty straightforward. You can find the info in your bike's service manual or in the Megasquirt manual. These are my four cylinder settings. Enter all this info and press the required fuel button. This opens a calculator where you can punch in your basic engine numbers. You should know most of this stuff. Air fuel ratio is 14.7 for gasoline. Make sure your units are correct. 
This will give you your required fuel number, which is basically the injector open time in milliseconds for your engine at 100% volumetric efficiency. When you get your dead time measured, you can enter it in the fuel setup. If you have a micro squirt, it will ask you your dead time and a rate of change due to battery voltage. The mega squirt will have a graph to allow a more specific tuning of dead time at different voltages. If you have a modern sport bike, you might have staged injection where you have upper injectors and lower injectors. This setup is super easy. Just go to staged injection and enter your injector flow rates for the upper and lower injectors. You can tell it when to change between the injectors using different sensors, but I have mine set up to follow this table on the right here. You can also tell it to transition fully to the secondary injectors or just have it transition to 50% upper and 50% lowers like I have. All right, this is the real fun one. There is a lot of stuff here and several of these don't make sense even after you read the manual, but I do recommend reading the manual on this section because there are so many different setups, even among motorcycles. The good news is that if you know what your trigger wheel looks like and you know what igniters you're using, then it's not too bad. Since the Mega Squirt doesn't have built-in igniters and most motorcycles use ECU igniters, you probably either have a quad spark or you're using other coils like the GM LS coil. I have a quad spark on my leader bike engine and I'm using the LS coil on my 250. These are the settings that I'm using for each of those. It might be a good place to start. Last time we talked about how to find the angle before top dead center of your number one tooth. This is where you enter that number. This timing setting here, we're going to start with it at fixed timing. We'll need to check our timing in a minute with it set at fixed. After we check the timing and verify it, we can come back and change it to table based. When we were setting all this up, I mentioned that the VR sensors will have one clean edge rising or falling. It's hard to know which one it is without an oscilloscope, so you might have to do a little testing here. Your crank sensor can be set up to look for the rising or falling edge, and the camshaft sensor can also look for rising or falling. You might have to try all four combinations of the two settings on the two sensors. If it's set up wrong, you'll get a bunch of cranking errors. You can use diagnostics and high-speed loggers to log the sensors while cranking. This will show not only the sensor outputs, but any cranking errors and where they are. Note that these dwell times, both cranking and nominal, are lower than the default values. You're probably going to be around these numbers if you have a motorcycle coil-on plug set up. The default values are going to make your coils get too hot, and it's not going to give you any better spark. If you're getting a lot of sync errors during cranking, but not during running, you might be too high on your dwell. When you get the engine running, you can reduce the nominal dwell at idle until you get some misfires and then add about two milliseconds. Most newer engines use a stepper motor to control idle, but some older ones just use an on-off solenoid. The Mega Squirt can control either. The Micro Squirt can only control the solenoid type. Go to Startup Idle and Idle Control. You can run your valve in open loop or closed loop. Closed loop will just adjust the valve based on the engine RPM. It's nice, but you might want to start with open loop and get it running well before you switch it to closed loop. My 250 doesn't have an idle control and my leader bike uses a mechanical idle control based on the engine coolant, so I don't have settings for either of these. Sorry. Remember all that sensor calibration we did when we were wiring this all up? Now is the time to enter that information into the ECU. The temperature sensors want three points, resistance and corresponding temperature. For the MAP sensor, if you're using an external one, you'll need to enter the air pressure at zero volts and the air pressure at five volts. You did this math already, right? Throttle position calibration is super easy. Just leave the throttle closed and press get current, then open it all the way and press get current again. Plug those two numbers in for closed and wide open. Set your exhaust oxygen sensor. For now, set it to no correction. We want to get a base tune first. Tell it what type of sensor you're using. You almost certainly want a wideband sensor. I use this one from AEM, but there are cheaper options out there. Once you have your sensors calibrated, go back to the dash and make sure they all say what they're supposed to say. Your map should be around 100 kPa if you're near sea level, your throttle position should be at zero and move with the throttle. Your coolant should probably be whatever the temperature is outside. Mine's a little higher because I was just running the engine. You have to check that your timing is correct. This is pretty important. Disconnect your spark plugs and injectors and crank over the engine. Check that your RPMs are correct, that your computer is showing cranking, and that it's synced. That's all good, it's time to check timing with a timing light. Plug your spark plugs back in, go to your ignition options, and set fixed advance. Plug in something like 10 degrees. My 1000 has a timing mark at exactly 8.5 degrees, so I use that. Crank the engine and make sure your strobe light is flashing at exactly the number of degrees before top dead center that you entered in fixed advance. Also, make sure it's stable and not moving more than a degree or two. Some of you have used a timing light before and know that they connect to the spark plug wire. Some of you also know that motorcycles don't usually have spark plug wires. Well, you have to make one. 
go to your local auto parts store and pick up one of these DIY spark plug wire kits and then just sort of connect one end to your spark plug and the other end to your coil. Hook up that timing light that you bought at the discount tool store like 15 years ago and then wonder why it doesn't work. Then throw it in the trash and go back to the auto parts store and buy whatever timing light they have. If you don't conveniently have a mark on your crankshaft at around 8.5 degrees of advance like I do, you can get a timing light that will allow you to dial in in advance. Then you can set the timing light at 8.5, set the timing at 8.5, and it should flash at exactly top dead center. If everything looks good here, you can reconnect your injectors and try to start the engine. You should get it to start here. It might not run well, but if it doesn't start, you'll want to go back and check your fuel and timing. If it does start, first off, congratulations. Second, check the timing again with the timing light. If your engine is running somewhat smooth, you can try to rev it up a little bit and make sure the timing doesn't drift as you rev up the engine. Your fuel VE table shows a bunch of colorful numbers. Across the bottom is your RPMs and up the side is your engine load. The load will be different based on your control algorithm. So if you're using the throttle position based control, it'll just show your throttle position from zero to 100%. Bigger numbers mean more fuel, and your map will kind of look like this. Wide open throttle will be the row at the very top. Idle will be the middle of the columns on the left. Deceleration is the bottom rows. Your general cruising will kind of be in the middle-ish, left-ish area. Click on Tools and then VE Table Generator. This will get you started. Plug in the information. You can get power and torque numbers with a quick internet search. This will spit out a table that will get you started, but it's almost certainly going to be wrong in a few areas. If you pay for Tuner Studio, which you should, it has an auto-tune feature called Tune Analyzer Live that gets rid of some of the headache. It'll adjust the fuel table as you drive to get it closer to your target air-fuel ratio. The Megasquirt can look at your exhaust gas sensor and adjust on the fly to try to hit a target air-fuel ratio, but I like to start with that setting off and use Tune Analyzer Live to get a basic setup. If you're really far off, the auto-tuning won't work on this or any other ECU or piggyback system. If you start running lean enough to misfire, you'll be spitting unburned fuel into the exhaust, making your exhaust sensor think you're running rich, so it'll go in the wrong direction, or likely it just won't get good enough data to do anything. Another drawback is that you need a computer to do this with the software, which is sort of difficult to do on a motorcycle. You can set up the computer to stay awake and put it in your backpack, but that kind of sucks because you can't really see what's going on. You can't stop or start the tune, and you can't write the correction to the fuel map without stopping to take your computer out of your bag, at which point you'll find out your computer shut down six miles ago and you lost all your data. I just straight up mounted my laptop to my handlebars. I believe this qualifies as a non-handheld device and thus shouldn't break any distracted driving laws, but just make sure you're not too distracted by it. Don't be changing settings and loading maps while you're writing. Or do. Whatever. I'm not the cops. You can also data log to the SD card inside your ECU and then use that to fix your tune later. Once you have a decent tune, you can start to fine tune some of the other settings. For instance, if you're doing the ITB mode that we talked about earlier, you'll want to adjust the switchover point where it changes from map based to throttle based tuning. There's a good video link in the description, but basically you need to drive around for a bit and gather some data and that'll tell you where your engine wants to switch over. I'm going to link to a few other places in the description where you can find more info on tuning your fuel. Honestly, I could do multiple videos on just that and it wouldn't be as good as what's already out there. You'll also need to tune the acceleration enrichment, starting settings, and your warm-up enrichments. Cranking Pulse tells your engine how much fuel to inject while you're trying to start it. This should be something like 200% at 70 degrees coolant temperature. You'll also have After Start Enrichment, which injects a little extra fuel right after you start the engine. Warm-up enrichment gives the engine extra fuel while it's warming up. This is like the choke on a carburetor. Most of these settings are basically guess and test type of things, but you can start with these settings here. Spark timing also needs to be tuned, but this one is tough to get exactly right without a dyno. Modern motorcycle engines can run a lot of advance. I'm running 50 degrees of advance, and that's a little aggressive. Modern sport bikes take a lot of advance, and you probably want to get there pretty quickly. I did dyno testing on a 600cc Honda some years ago, and we cranked in so much timing that I'm kind of surprised it didn't explode on the dyno. We didn't really get any noticeable gains after about 50 degrees, nothing that was worth the extra heat and stress. If you're running boost, you'll want to reduce the advance quite a bit in that area. You can find your idle timing in your bike's service manual. You should add spark advance below that RPM so your bike will want to rev up to its idle RPM if it drops. I'm going to talk about a few other things you need to set up, but there are a lot of outputs you might need or want to use other than the ones that I'm using, so definitely check the manual. You'll probably want a rev limiter, so go ahead and set that up. There are some fancy settings in here, but I use a pretty basic setup. You'll need to use one of your outputs to run your fan, but you also need to tell the software what output it is and what temperature to turn your fan on. 
Plug that info into your fan control so you can say to the ECU, uh, hey man, how about you turn on that relay attached to this output whenever the engine gets above 180 degrees or whatever. A couple of the not so often used settings that I'm setting up are launch control and nitrous control. You again might have different things you want to control, but I'm going to go over these so you kind of have a good idea of how to set up outputs. There is a built-in launch control that looks for an on-off switch, but I'm not going to use a switch like that. I'm using a clutch pressure sensor that has a 0 to 5 volt input. The launch control setting won't let me specify where in the analog range that I want the switch to happen. Not directly anyway, but the capability is there. You have to go into programmable on-off outputs and scroll down to loop 1. These loops are like fake inputs that you can specify based on other real inputs. So I can tell loop 1 to turn on whenever my analog input is above whatever value I specify. Then you just go back to your launch control and use loop 1 as your trigger. These loops are useful if you have some weird things you want to happen based on one or two other sensors, sort of like a if this then that. Megasquirt has built-in nitrous control that can check your input switch and only inject nitrous with certain parameters like RPM, throttle position, coolant temperature. They can also inject extra fuel to compensate for any added nitrous, but I'm using a wet system that brings its own fuel, so no extra fuel here. If you're looking for more specific info, or if you're getting tripped up on things, there are several things you can do. The first thing you should do is double check your sensors and outputs. Open up Tuner Studio and check all your sensor gauges to make sure they all make sense. Also open up the test mode and test your injectors and spark plugs. If something isn't right there, double check your wiring. Make sure everything is connected correctly. You might have something backwards or be missing a ground or something. If you have specific sensor issues, you can check your sensor with a multimeter to make sure they're giving the expected voltages or resistances. Also, find the appropriate section of the manual and give that another read. The forums on msextra.com are a good place to get specific answers. A lot of questions have been asked and answered, so do a search first. If you want a deeper understanding of how you should be tuning, or if you want to know about specific AFR targets, data logging, tuning, there are a few good videos on YouTube. A few bad ones too, but check out Andy Whittle's channel. He has a lot of good info on specifics, or just search around. I'll put some resources in the description below, and if you know of anything that I haven't mentioned, or if you have any good tips, put them in the comments. What will I build next? I don't know. I do know, actually, it's right in there. But if you want to find out, hit that subscribe button and follow along. Be sure to like and share and all that other stuff, and I'll see you next time.